This is a presentation of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Great Lakes Environmental Research Laboratory. It's July, and just off the coast of Muskegon in Lake Michigan, scientists from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Great Lakes Environmental Research Laboratory are busy. NOAA scientists have studied Lake Michigan for over 30 years, but recently they've observed dramatic changes in the lake's food web, changes that are occurring very quickly. For ecologist Henry Vanderplug and biologist Ed Rutherford, that means new questions to answer and lots of data to collect. What we're concerned about this is the food web has totally changed in Lake Michigan primarily due to the presence of quagga mussels. And what they have done is removed phytoplankton and other particulate material and made the water a lot clearer. And this affects the whole food web. Uh, first of all, there's less phytoplankton available for growth, uh, less phytoplankton available for food, for salt plankton, which in turn feeds the fish. The other thing is light massively uh, increased in the system and as a result uh, the water is uh, is much clearer. Glural scientists have determined the open subsurface waters of Lake Michigan are now similar to Lake Superior, a lake that is on average almost twice as deep and considerably colder. The unprecedented changes in the food web have potentially huge implications, especially for the multi-billion dollar fishing industry in the Great Lakes and the ecosystem could still be shifting as it, as it is unclear when the quagga mussel population will reach its peak. As a result, Glural researchers like Rutherford and Vanderplug, along with many other research institutions and universities, face a unique challenge attempting to understand how fish have adapted by studying both the plankton that young fish feed on and the fish larvae themselves, such as where they are underwater, how fast they're growing, and their diet. So their growth rate uh, determines in large part how fast they move through this very sensitive young stage. And the faster they grow, the more likely they are to survive. So it gives us an index of their potential survival and uh, recruitment to the fishery. Researchers at Glural staged their field research efforts on this lake from the Lake Michigan Field Station. The field station, located in Muskegon, Michigan, right on the Muskegon River Channel, provides ready access to Lake Michigan and serves as home port for all of Glural's research vessels. Originally a U.S. Coast Guard station, Glural purchased the facility in 1990. Rich with maritime history, the recently renovated facility houses laboratory and office space, in addition to scientists and support staff who are based permanently in Muskegon. At 80 feet in length, the Laurentian is Glural's largest research vessel among a fleet of over 10 ships docked at the field station, all of which operate without the use of any petroleum-based products as a part of Glural's Green Ship Initiative, which earned the lab an award from the U.S. Department of Energy. Able to accommodate as many as 14 people, the Laurentian functions as a home away from home for researchers doing field work between March and December and is often used for round-the-clock sampling operations. Rutherford and Vanderplug will use it three times this year, in April, July, and September, to go on week-long cruises in order to sample fish and plankton at different stages of their life cycle at locations off the coast of Muskegon. In order to do this, the research vessel is equipped with some interesting tools. Fish trials and plankton tow nets allow for researchers to gather samples of fish and plankton so they can determine species, size, and diet. There are also devices that help identify the location of these organisms underwater. We were doing acoustic transects identif uh, using sonar to identify the position of the fish in the water column. We were also using a special tool that we developed here called the plankton survey system. That uh, maps out the spatial distribution of phytoplankton, light, uh, temperature, and zooplankton. And so we're able to map out the distribution of fish and all components of the food web to see how they've changed so we can compare it with past studies. With these tools, 
pluralinist research partners can study these vast ecosystems in order to provide stakeholders such as fishery managers and charter fishermen with information vital to their work.